Good evening, everybody. It is Wednesday. It's August the 25th. I'm meteorologist David Paul with your tropical update. The Atlantic Basin is busy. We've got three systems out there. They have names, sort of, 97, 98, and 99L. They're all invest. They are areas of disturbed weather that the Hurricane Center is running their suite of spaghetti models on. All three of them have a chance of developing. We can take a look at the three of them. There's one out here, open Atlantic. Another spot, 30% chance for developing uh, in the open Atlantic. That's 97, that's 98. It is 99 L though here in the uh, Caribbean with an 80% chance for development that we're gonna devote most of our time to as this is the only one of the three that is forecast to impact people and perhaps millions of people if it does impact the Gulf Coast states in the United States. And here's where we stand this evening. 50% chance for developing a closed low, a tropical depression over the next two days, 80% chance for that to happen over the next five days. I think within five days, we're probably gonna have a tropical storm or a hurricane as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. Conditions over the Gulf of Mexico, by the way, have become very conducive for development in about three or four days. We're gonna look at those here as we move along. Okay, visible satellite, so it's the evening, so we're losing the daylight. But from outer space, while the evening uh, sunshine was still down there, you can see it's beginning to rotate a little bit. It's beginning to get that look like it is indeed becoming a, a better organized system. It's got to get a closed low at the surface to be upgraded to depression. And, and at least as of this broadcast here, it's, it hasn't done that yet. But it's got several things going for it. Number one, it's beginning to twist. And then it's got plenty of warm ocean water to work with. Sea surface temperatures, 83 84 degrees all over the place and it's deep. This goes down several hundred feet. So there's not gonna be any upwelling of cold air to, to pour cold water, if you will, on the development. And in the Gulf of Mexico, especially Northern Gulf, look at the bath water temperature, 88 degrees there on the Texas, uh, Louisiana coastline. Quite often you'll see hurricanes just as they're about to make landfall really intensify rapidly. It has to do with a couple of things. The upper level winds really have to be right, number one. And then if the upper level winds are correct, then they can really tap into that warm ocean heat content. And, and that may be a player, depending on the exact track of the storm, as we head into early next week. Spaghetti models are running. These are all the tropical models from the Hurricane Center. And, you know, they have a wide range of possibilities. Anything from Brownsville to Houston to Lake Charles to New Orleans, all the way over to Panama City, Florida, are potentially in play. Now, that's 800 miles or more of coastline. So all the weather people on all the TV stations from Brownsville to Florida are watching this carefully and saying basically the same thing. There's a huge amount of uncertainty in the future track of this thing and you need to pay very close attention to the forecast each day for the next several days and begin to think about what are your hurricane plans. Inland are you ready? On the coast are you ready? We'll talk more about that in just a minute. So with that type of a spread, it's, it's very difficult to begin to really pinpoint who's most likely to see the intense center of that storm. But beginning tomorrow, beginning on Thursday, her, um, NOAA is going to begin to fly its Hurricane Hunter suite of aircraft. It'll fly the low-level flights into the developing system in the Caribbean. But then they're also going to begin to fly their high-level flights with the Gulf Stream 4, nicknamed Gonzo. So this is a flying laboratory. And what they do with this is they fly in the atmosphere around the storm and ahead of the storm. They measure the atmosphere that the storm will be moving into. And they put that data into their suite of tropical computer models. And you'll be shocked at how quickly those computer model spreads can tighten up once we get that fresh, very accurate real-time data uh, as far as the atmosphere's condition that the storm would be moving into. But it won't be for another 36 to 48 hours, I don't think, until we'll really get the data we need, get it into the models, get the models to run, and then we'll have a better handle on where it's going. But that may be one and a half, two days away. Here's how this is going to play out big picture wise. The setup at 500 millibars, the steering currents, is we've got this ridge of high pressure, big mountain of air over the middle part of the country. This is the same ridge that pushed Grace into Mexico. This is a mountain of air, so storms can't climb the mountain. They get pushed around it. And if things were to stay just like this, you'd have a storm going into Mexico, but they're not. They're going to change. And as we head through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that ridge of high pressure, that mountain of air splits in two. So we get one mountain of air on the east coast over Atlanta. We get another mountain of air over El Paso. 
And what we get in the middle is a valley. It's the path of least resistance. The storm doesn't want to climb the mountain. You don't want to climb the stairs. You want to stay in the valley where it's easy to walk. And this is going to take a walk right through the valley. The tough part about the forecast right now is we don't know exactly which part of that valley the center of the storm is going to take. And that's the part where we need more data. And we really need a low level center to form on that thing so that the models can begin to key and initiate off of a, a well-defined single point. We don't have that yet either, which is why the models are still really all over the place. Now, the two big ones we've been leaning on heavily for the past couple of days, the European and the GFS, the American model, and they're interesting this evening. So the Euro's in red, the GFS in yellow, and going into Friday evening, they're both very similar. We've got a tropical storm developing here just off the western tip of Cuba. And then they begin to split, and they have two very different solutions. This is the 18Z, by the way, Wednesday 18Z of the GFS in yellow, and it's out ahead of and more intense than the European at this time. We take this into Sunday at 9 p.m. So there is a possibility that we could have a landfalling hurricane south of New Orleans as we head into Sunday evening, Sunday night. The GFS is still way out here. It doesn't make landfall until about 18 hours later and in southwest Louisiana near Lake Charles. And that would be Monday afternoon. So we've got two very different outcomes right now. It's a perfect example of just how much uncertainty there is in the current forecast. These are not gospel. Take both of these model runs with a big grain of salt. You've been watching them. They've been changing every run to run. They'll continue to change until we get a low level center for them to initiate off of and we get that better data from Gonzo of the atmosphere out ahead of the storm. I know what you're thinking. Is this going to sit on anybody like Harvey did 2017? By the way, today the anniversary of the landfall of Hurricane Harvey. At the moment, that's not the forecast. GFS races it up the spine of the Appalachians. Euro's a little slower, but still it doesn't sit on the coast of uh, Louisiana or Texas or anywhere near the coast. Uh, by Wednesday, it's in the middle part of the country, Mississippi Valley. Here's a closer look at the model runs, uh, more individual. Here's the Saturday, the Euro. It's got that system developing here, western tip of Cuba. It puts a hurricane here, southwest Louisiana, going into Monday, 4 p.m. That would put New Orleans on the dirty side. Wind, rain, surge, Vermilion Bay in particular, in this particular scenario. Clean side would be Houston. You, get, you would get west of the Texas-Louisiana border, west of Beaumont, and you wouldn't have much impacts at all in a, in a track just like this. It won't be exactly like that. Here's the GFS, American model taking a direct hit into New Orleans. This is Sunday, 7 p.m. Dirty side, New Orleans over to Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. Florida would have some surge impacts with a strong hurricane like that if that were to develop. Houston would stay mostly dry with this type of a scenario. It's amazing what a difference the track could make. For Houston to have any significant impacts, for example, the center would have to go in south and west of Houston to get on that dirty side. And it's still within the realm of possibility. But one thing that both of these models do have in common is that they both rapidly intensify this storm once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. So what's going on? Well, to get a storm to rapidly intensify, it needs to be stacked vertically for a healthy storm. Inflow, up it goes to the storm, and then out it goes the exhaust, way up at 34,000 feet. It needs that exhaust up top. It can't be sheared in any way. Wind shear tilts it over, disrupts the flow, and you get an unhealthy hurricane, one that can be ripped apart, or at least it won't intensify rapidly, no matter how warm the water is. Wind shear will not let that storm intensify. So what is expected to go on over the Gulf of Mexico as we head through the next two or three days is very interesting. Here are the upper level winds. Jet stream winds 34,000 feet. I often use this map in the wintertime to follow the jets and see where the cold front and the cold air is going to go. But in this case, it works perfectly for forecasting possible rapid intensification of a tropical system in the Gulf. These are the current winds or forecast winds by 10 o'clock Wednesday evening. Notice there's a little bit of upper level shear over the Gulf of Mexico. Storm moving into this atmosphere would be sheared a little bit and it would not rapidly intensify. That shear really does a number on these developing systems. But what's going to happen is as we head into Sunday, as these storms are moving into the Gulf of Mexico, we get an upper level ridge. You end up with what's called upper level difluence and that will encourage intensification. Can you see it? Look at this. Big 
clockwise rotation, just the opposite of the winds down at the surface, but that's way about 34,000 feet. Very light ridge of high pressure, just quietly spinning clockwise up there on the top of the storm. This will create that perfect outflow, the exhaust that a storm needs to undergo rapid intensification. And that's what the models are picking up on. That's why they intensify it so rapidly. It's not because the sea surface temperatures are so warm. It's because the upper level winds are so light and perfect exhaust. And, and it is concerning. This may end up being a strong hurricane because of that upper level pattern. So what to do with all of this information if you're on the Gulf Coast? Inland areas, if you're out of a surge zone, check supplies. Food and water for several days. Gallon of water per adult human per day is what you need. If you're on the coast, know your evacuation routes. Talk about it with your family. Say, hey, there's, there's a storm brewing. It could come our way. It could be close. What are the routes? Where would we go if we were asked to evacuate if we're on the coast? And maybe most importantly, gather information, monitor the forecast. Trusted sources uh, twice a day, once in the morning and once before you go on off to bed. So you and your family, nobody gets caught off guard in case the storm decides to head in your direction. That's where we stand on this Wednesday evening with 99L. Ida or, uh, uh, oh, what's the J name? <laughs> what? What is it? Julian. <laughs> Thank you to my producer. It's been a busy day. Ida or Julian uh, will most likely be the name of the storm that moves into the Gulf. We'll have a complete update again on Thursday. We'll see you then.